Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Siegel. I'm the president of CandleCharts.com. I'm also a trader and investor myself. So uh, right after I'm done with this intro, I'm going to sit back and watch Sil do a demonstration of Nissan Candle Scanner. Even though I've been using it for years, there's always a way that you can improve your use of the software. So uh, Sil is one of our two Nissan certified trainers. That means he is uh, only one of two people in the whole world that will teach on behalf of Steve Nissen. In addition to that, Sil is also our main guru of tech support for Nissan Candle Scanner. So we felt who better to provide a quick demo of the uh, Nissan Candle Scanning software than Sil. So without further ado, I'm going to put my mic on mute. Sil, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the intro. That's very kind. Um, I feel very special now. So thanks everybody for joining us on this uh, time. We're going to spend like uh, about uh, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes at least looking at a few things, answering some questions as well. So this is all about the Nissan Candle Scanner. So by the name, it sounds very fancy, but it is. It's got plenty of things it can do. So just main thing really that maybe the confusion I'm going to mention right away is it's not a standalone program. It just represents essentially uh, an indicator. So if you think about indicators on your charts, of those of you who have used charts, so think of like Bollinger Bands, think of moving averages, right, on your chart. That is essentially is what this is. It's an indicator that gets placed on your chart. With that indicator, then, of course, you can do things with that indicator, study things, look at things, find things, backtracking, scan for things that are related to that indicator. That's what this is all about. That's why it's called a scanner, but it's not an actual scanner by itself. So it's implemented as an app, if you will, as an indicator within Ninja Trader, in this case, other software packages as well. Right now we're demonstrating Ninja Trader. So for those who are interested in other uh, software that may be compatible, then that's, well, have you talked to Paul? And I'll certainly want to flash his email address a little bit later, but certainly it's paul at candlecharts.com. So I'll just at least mention it for now, but a visual I'll show it to you later. So uh, let me show you right off the bat. I'm going to start with uh, you know just a simple chart right off the bat. This is going to be a, just a plain old you know chart that you'd find on Ninja Trader 8. And what I've done is I've already placed Nissan Candle Scanner, if you will, on the chart. So if I were to right click on the chart and I go to the, the list of indicators here, you do Control I just as easily off your keyboard. There's going to be a list that comes up. So we, when you install it on your computer in a, as a file, as an indicator, it will show up on your list. And we did it so that it would show up first on the list instead of alphabetically. So there it is at the top. So once it's there and visible, then you can place it on your chart. And anything that's a place on the chart, you'll see in the bottom left corner is the configured side. So once it's that's highlighted, then you can change the configurations on the right side. So if you notice, and then maybe I'll make this window a little bit bigger so it shows more stuff on it. And you'll see so that's all the content that's on that indicator. So you've got all the various favorite candle patterns for, that Steve enjoys, that has light, has studied, and feels reliable. So you got the bullish side, you got the bearish side. And uh, if I close that, you've also got two neutral, doji and high wave as well. Um, they will come out as blue and red only. Uh, these, again, are not automatic signals just to buy and sell. That's not what this is. Uh, these are just to identify, to learn, to study, to understand uh, when those candle patterns appear. So consequently, in context, once you learn more about candles and how they should be used, is that uh, they become obviously powerful trading tools at that time when they are all sort of clicking into place, when the stars align, if you will. Uh, so that's where this all shows up in here. Uh, so that's where you can configure whatever candle you want appearing on your chart. The other thing I could do and tell you is that if you look, um, you can make some changes, for instance, I can go here, just choose them all or choose none as well. I can individually change this to, I don't want, you know, a hammer or yes, I want a hammer. And there's also what's called a strict criteria, which is, uh, will refine your study of those particular candle pattern meaning that it's stricter that you'll they won't show up as often because there's a stronger definition for them more has to occur for them to truly become say a hammer or a bullish engulfing etc okay so all that's in the literature and so on so uh so right now everything's sort of you know, chosen to, to yes i have the three white soldiers here the rising three which are currently a no and also the tweezers bottom and top are also a no just because 
just for choice, just for randomness at the moment. Um, and the other thing, let's see, what else was I going to show you? Oh, in terms of the abbreviation, right now you can see the lettering in black above and below. Uh, those those represent then the uh, patterns themselves. So if it's a negative, it means it's bearish. If it's a positive, uh, it will be a bullish. If it's positive, of course, with a blue color, that's you know that's that's the bullish side. The red color, of course, being the bearish side with the negative sign as well. Um, you can put them in in text form as well. So here you'll see right there. See that it says in the display here. Use pattern abbreviations. It's checked off. So if you uncheck it, and I'll click apply here so I don't lose the window, you'll see that everything now turns into text. So when I first got this, when I purchased it myself, that's how I got involved with this company in the first place, was I, I was a customer just like you. And I was intrigued and I wanted to learn more about candles. I thought, what better than the, the guy himself, uh, Mr. Nissen, and, and then you know learn his favorites as well. So I, for the longest time, was literally having the text on the screen because I want to you know, understand what they were, what they were named, what they were called. And then later the abbreviations became really easy. And then you know, from there, it's like not even on my screen anymore because I don't really need it, but certainly there for in case I'm not quite sure, I want to make sure that I put it on the screen and, and find out. So that's, that's something that one can do. Uh, you obviously can take up a lot of space on your screen. Um, so maybe you select only certain candle patterns that you want versus others, right? So we're gonna put that back to abbreviation for now. So that's how that can be done. So that's gonna show up all the way through. It doesn't matter how far back, there's no look back. This is not a scan, this is just because it's an indicator. So if you put a moving average on, it's just gonna be on there, no matter what, how far back. You don't ask it to say, well, give me the last three months only. You're gonna want it for you know, your lifetime or whatever data that you have in your chart. So it's just gonna show up everywhere. And it doesn't matter what time frame. Currently, this is a daily. I can go to a weekly. It's gonna be there as well. So now you get a weekly version of that candle versus a monthly. So it'll show up on every time frame. As long as you got data for that, it will show up on whatever time frame. I go down to a five minute. And it doesn't matter what instrument. So the common questions, folks, is that, you know, will this work with blank? Will it work with, uh, you know, Forex? Will it work with the futures? Will it work in India? Will it work in the UK? Yes, 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 all, yes to all of it, because if you can get a chart up on the right platform that uses NCS and you can get candles, right? So you have data that creates a candle and that software, of course, can be used with NCS, then yes, it'll work as long as it works with that platform. So Ninja Trader, for instance, if you're India, yeah, if you got India, you can create a candle, you, it works. doesn't matter where you are, you're on an island somewhere, you got data and you got candles on your chart and it's the right platform, you're good to go. So it's just an indicator. Yeah, it's not a standalone, so it doesn't really matter. So there it is. So that's a so that's a five minute. You can go down to a three minute. It still shows up. It doesn't matter. And so it all depends on what kind of time frame you trade, not trade, whatever else. So it can be again used anywhere in the world. Um, Whatever data, whatever instrument makes no difference. As long as you've got candles and you're on the right platform to support the software, you are good to go, all right? Simple as that. All right, so let's go back to a daily. Now that we've done that. So the other common stuff many times would be, um, you know, how do you scan? So people want to find certain things. They want to find, uh, say, hammers only. They want to find, say, a bullish engulfing. They want to find say, something that they're intrigued that they want to study for instance as well. So that's where you would bring up what's called a market analyzer. This is essentially like a spreadsheet, um, a table that the Ninja has created that you would either use just as a watch list of stocks and instruments that you use that are linked up to charts, but also they could be scanning for something. In this case, we would be scanning for the NCS. So uh, if from the main, this is the one thing that will always show up whenever you turn on Ninja, it's the control center. So this is where you would get everything, find everything. So if I go to the new menu item, all kinds of things occur here. But what I'm interested in, of course, is either a chart. So a chart, which I just, you know, this is already open, or in this case, alphabetically, you have the market analyzer, right? So if I click on that, I'll end up with a blank window and I'll just, I've already got some open, so I'm just gonna show you what those look like and I've got some things already in there as well. So um, here's a, an example. Now the 
the, the default market analyzer will actually have four columns. It'll have like a you know, bid price, ask price, last price, whatever, four columns, which I take out and then I replace it with, in this case, it's called a candle chart scanner. So when I click, right click, and I want to configure my columns, the instrument's always going to be there. That's the default call that will never go away. So I click on columns. What do I want in my columns? Well, I want the scanner. I want the you know, NCS in there. So in this listing, it's called candle chart scanner right there. So just like we did on the chart, it looks like the same menu item, right? Just double click or choose it and put it on that configure side at the bottom. Once it's there, when you click on it, again, just like we saw on the chart earlier, you can choose what you want to study. Same, same thing. So, um, and they're independent. This is independent in the chart. So the chart can have all this, all the uh, chart patterns, the market analyzer, maybe only the bullish and dolphin, or only both the bearish and bullish and dolphin, or just hammers, whatever, shooting stars, whatever you want, right? Configure, configure it however you'd like. Uh, you can also have a what's called a look back period. So if you want to look back and say, well, I want to look back for the last week and see, you know, on a daily chart. So there's your look back period. How many days back do you want to look for a candle pattern? Most people are going to come home, say at the end of work or once a day, do a scan. So you don't have to do anything because it'll just show the last day, the last candle. So if you're doing a daily, it'll be the last day. If you're doing a monthly, it'll be the last month. If you're doing a weekly, the last week. If you're doing a 15 minute chart, it will be the last 15 minute candle, right? So that's the look back period is just that. So that can be set up however you want. It's like when Paul is, I think Paul's going to be doing a demonstration on his bouncing ball. Uh, if his configuration remains the same as it was from years past, it's the last. He does it, uh, I think, a look back of eight. So he's looking back at the last eight candles for when there may have been a hammer. And so it could be yesterday, it could have been five days ago, it'll show up in this scan because it's the last eight days. Right, so uh, you could have three hammers in those eight days, and all three of them will show up. So it will do that as well. All right, so that's I wanted to show you that. So that's the market analyzer. So this one's like not really configured. Um, all you have to do is add a list of instruments at this point. So uh, that's pretty simple. You right click and then just add instruments here at the top. So individually, you can do that. You can do essentially lists that are created already. You can act, make your own list as well, customize it. You can actually you know, just create one. So uh, you can add things. So I, I, I don't know if the blockchains were there before, or did I add that? I can't even recall now. Um, so futures are there. I added the IBD 50 here. Um, there's other ones. NASDAQ 100 is usually in there as well. Some of these are already there. It's like trade ideas, some that I put in there a long time ago, it's still there. So you could create your own list. You might have 12, 15, 25. It's up to you. You can do whatever you like. So it'll show up easily in there. So you just load it up. In this case, I'll just do a, a small list. And the reason I'll do a small list is because I'm going to warn you this as well. So just this came up this week. Somebody uh, emailed me and said, you know, here's my, the configuration of my computer. I've got you know this speed, that speed, this memory, whatever. And everything was great. He had a very strong, robust, high memory computer, but he felt it was a little slow. I said, well, keep in mind, NinjaTrader is on your computer. It's not like in the web. It's not in the cloud. And every scan you run is on your computer. So your computer is now responsible for the scan, not somewhere else. So if you put, you know, 500 stocks and you're looking for, you know, six different candle patterns, that's a lot. It's going to be like really slow in, in text. So the slower your computer, the more text it's going to be, the slower it's going to be. So that's keep that in mind when you're doing scans. It's trying to maybe minimize the amount of stuff you're doing all at once. The more scans you got running simultaneously, because sometimes you may have three different scans running at the same time. It's going to tax your computer. So it's going to appear very, very slow program when really it's not so much your computer, so much it's not so much the program. It's just that you've, you've actually done that to it to really isolate or to uh, minimize its, its productivity. So I'm going to do a short list, as I said, just because. So if I do the, the DAX 30, I'll do the Dow 30 because that's just a uh, small list of 30. And so, think, uh, there. so there's the list that goes yellow. It immediately starts to scan, boom, there it is. I already scanned for the stuff that I wanted that is already built in here, right? I had all that stuff minus the, uh, the soldiers, minus the tweezer tops and bottoms. So, that's, so now, right now, these are showing up. Um, if I'm going to do one thing, I'm going to just size that up a little bit here. I am going to move this over and I'll show you. I'm going to link this scanner to the chart. 
So in the upper here, there's that little blank gray box that says instrument link. If I click on it, I'll pick a color, I'll pick red. And on the chart on the far right here, it's currently green, but I'm gonna make it red so the same color. So now they're linked together. So if I click on Caterpillar where the high wave is, see the chart opens up automatically. So you can set it up as just a watch list with you know nothing else. Uh, you can set it up for with a scan as well. So whatever, whatever you'd like, but there's your high wave showing up. The bull sash on McDonald's shows up. There it is on the chart right there. And then uh, evening star, that's Merck. There's your evening star on the far right. So remember, we did a one day look back, which is the last candle. If I had done eight candles, for instance, I would also get the bull sash over here on the far left, right? And the dark cloud cover as well, including the bearish engulfing. I have all of these, this one, this one, this one, this one, all those would show up in that eight day scan, right? So why don't I just do that? I'll do that, in fact, I'll do that on Merck by itself. So I don't have to deal with the other ones showing up with eight candles or eight days. Uh, what else we got? So we have a hammer there on the United Health, I guess that is. There's the hammer. All right, you get the idea. There's a piercing on Verizon. There it is, piercing on support as well. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to just quickly disconnect that so I don't mess up the charts. I'm going to delete everything except for. Um, what do we have, McDonald's or something? I can't remember what it was now, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so that, we'll just delete all the other ones. Oops, do that again. There we go, put it back in. Uh, that's not what I wanted. After all, it's uh, Merck, there we go. That's fine. So let's go uh, columns again, let's go find it, candle scanner. And let's do a look back. This is like more. I'll do 15 days instead. And then click OK. So now it's going to scan. There it is. So now if I were to expand this, you're going to see it shows up. Bull, bearish engulfing, bull sash, dark cloud cover, tweezer top, and evening star. Right? If I click on it, loads up the chart. Uh, actually, I don't have the colors. There it is. Red. There it is. There. So now we've got the evening star. Sash, engulfing, dark cloud cover, etc. Right? It's all there. So yeah, it depends on how you want to scan it, how you want to do it, but that's how that would work right there. Okay. All right. So the next thing would be other maybe fancier things that you could do. Here I've got two columns on that far left. Let's connect that to a uh, this was actually uh, let's do the red again. That's fine. We'll do red there, like that. So now I just got silver up there for now. So I got two other columns, one standard, one strict. That now is gonna define what type of candle you've got. Remember I showed you earlier, yes, no, or strict. So those are the two different definitions of the type of candle you can put in here. Um, go back to columns. So what I did was I simply added candle chart scanner twice, right? And then I just renamed them. So if I go to the standard, you go to lower on the screen here, and right here, the label, you can see that right there. I just typed in standard instead of where it said candle chart scanner. So I could rename it to whatever I want. So I made this one standard, I made the other one strict. That's all I did. And after that, of course, the configuration was this is standard, so that's just yes. The other one is was chosen as strict. So let's click on strict and I'll show you there. See everything says strict. Now, some patterns don't have strict, like a window is just a window. There is no strict pattern for windows. So it's all, it's all you gotta choose is the standard version. So that'll show me the same way on both, okay? So you will see rising window show up on both columns unless you've eliminated it just so that it doesn't show up twice. All right, makes sense? So right now I've only got silver. So let's just put in the, the rest of the Dow again, including silver. We'll do the same thing and see what, what, see what happens. Dow Jones, let's select all, the will load. It's gonna maybe take a little bit longer, but that's still, that's pretty fast. So there we go. So now we see we've got on a standard basis, you're gonna see more picks showing up, more patterns showing up on the standard than you will in strict, because again, the strict is gonna be a, a finer definition and it will be, um, it'll, be it'll yield less stuff. 
but that's another way to do scans sometimes when you get too many and you want to funnel down and filter down is maybe switch over to more strict uh, and then you'll get less picks and that's seen sometimes down to maybe at least half and sometimes it could be as little as maybe a quarter or less could be that 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 much difference between the two so um, but of course once you have it you're of course you're going to see that both columns when it does show up as strict obviously you see evening star here on Merck again because uh, it's both a um, standard as well as identified as a strict simultaneously all right so that's one other way so you see at the bottom of that market analyzer here on that same screen you're going to see that I have the standard strict tab and I got I built another tab which is all of the choices that I, and I don't remember if I did something with that one but you can create tabs now that have the different configurations you can have one tab like I have here what I did with the other one is all of them here it's just one column with all of them you just fill it in with instruments uh, the last one I cannot recall actually there's something in there I do not remember if I had done something here or not take a quick look yeah so some of them see no 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 I've got bull sash only uh, and I didn't just I just didn't rename it just so you can see the difference so that's where it says candle chart scanner right there right just change the name that way you can keep track of but as I said earlier in terms of taxing your computer um, if you've got instruments filled here, instruments filled there, instruments filled there, they're all scanning at the same time in the background. So it's gonna be a little busy for you, right? So right now on mine, I've got just those few that I showed you, plus I actually have one here on the side that I'm gonna bring in here in a moment, but I want to at least show you those variations that you can come up with. Um, and you'll notice that uh, every tab, that one's linked up to red, this next tab has no link, it's got green. So it could be a different chart. You could have more than one chart on your screen. So they are showing different scans, but again, it'll be taxing your computer to some degree. So just keep that in mind as well, okay? Um, I guess another thing I didn't mention at the beginning, it's best that you create a white background or a lighter background. Uh, the default comes as dark black, which is nice on the eye sometimes but you can't change the color of the text, which I've had people ask me, how do you change it? You can't, there's no way to change it. So it's black, so you have to go white or something light and you can still read it, um, simple as that. So with black, of course, you'll still see the red or the blue, but you won't see the letters. So you might wanna play around with that, but certainly white becomes a lot easier to see. That's really the only thing that's requested is that you go to a lighter screen right off the bat. Uh, okay, so, uh, yes, uh, any any stocks, anything that generates a candle, anything, doesn't matter, all right? Anything, India, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, we've had people all over the world. I've, I've talked to people all over the world uh, and um, if they've got, they, they just gotta have data, data to their chart, you got data to your chart, if you have, Ninja, you can create candles, right? All you now need is data for where you live. You have data, you've got your candles, you got your candles, you got NCS at work. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you want only the stocks with result, only download, want to transfer to Excel, please. What? I, I'm not even sure I understand what you're asking. Yeah. With result, only download, want to try. I'm not even sure what that even is. So you want to transfer that on to to an Excel spreadsheet? I'm not even sure. Why, so I'm not even sure why you would do that exactly, because um, this, this is essentially already your Excel. But you, you can do it. It can be it can be transferred over. You can export it. You right click on the market analyzer and export it, and then you transfer it over to an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, uh, but it's already on your screen, so I'm not sure why you. I'm not sure what the purpose would be, unless you, unless you keep it a binder of something, but that's how you do it. Just right, right click on the market analyzer, export. It automatically goes to Excel spreadsheet. Okay, that's that. Uh, so here's another thing that I played around with a while back because other people will use other indicators, right? So they'll they'll have the distant candle scanner. They might be looking for something that's uh, you know bearish or bullish when things are overbought or oversold. They might be using the stochastics. They might be using the RSI, for instance. Uh, and so you might want to see something that's coincidental. Now I don't have a stochastic RSI on the chart. Maybe you would, maybe you will. 
Again, the tabs I showed you on the market analyzer, you also got tabs on the chart just as well. So I see on this one, I got volume and I got two moving uh, moving uh, moving averages. I got a 2155, I believe. Yep. So if there's you know something like that that you're looking for, in this case, you might have a stochastics or an RSI on your screen, and you're looking for that visual as well. But if I'm looking at uh, a bearish candle and it's overbought, right? So I configured this so that it goes green for a buy signal, uh, if you will, right? Because it's oversold, red when it's in an overbought state above a certain number. Um, and it, so if it happens to coincide, so is a rising window going to coincide with a, both an overbought and oversold? Pro probably not, but we can take a look at it. Is there anything else? You got a hammer when it's oversold. Now that would be something that's interesting, right? So something that's very much oversold with a hammer could be a value, right? So let's let's see what that looks like. Green, we'll click on the hammer on UNH, and it's already up, of course. Now, uh, I think I've got the data configured such that, uh, or I don't have the hammer showing up on the, on the chart, so just disregard the fact that it's not there for now, but there it is. So now you've got, Essentially, it says the RSI and the stochastics, the RSI and the stochastic both are showing oversold, and we're having a hammer. So you would look at your chart and say, "Yeah, I think I like what I'm seeing. I'm getting you know multiple indications that maybe it's at support. Uh, you know, we're showing oversold. We're showing a hammer. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to consider this a, a strong trade, and so I'm going to consider getting it. So it's whatever your configuration may be. Everyone trades differently, so it's whatever you want to make it be. So. I've had questions before like, well, what do you do? Well, it doesn't really matter what I do because it may have nothing to do with what you do. And if you do something now and you want to see if it, how it'll work with you and make it work better, and maybe other strategies down the road you might want to start considering, that's where you start playing with this and experimenting and asking questions at that time. Um, So Mahendra, you just uh, talked to Paul. There's, the recorders, I think, will be sent off to whoever registered, I believe, or available somewhere, but uh, certainly that'll be available for sure. Um, we start recording right from the beginning, so it's all recorded. Uh, there's nothing major, major, major that you're gonna miss out because you've been doing this for a while anyway. So, uh, all right, so that's, again, another sort of configuration that one can consider. Um, ideally, again, the more columns you put in, the more indicators you put in your market analyzer, the more taxing Right on your computer, the slower it gets. So when I turned on my computer, I opened up this workspace and I had this workspace set up just for these kinds of calls. Uh, these charts show up, these market analyzers show up because they're already pre-made. I don't use these on a daily basis. This is just purely for presentation. Um, so this was already, as soon as I turned on, boom, this you know, loaded up, took a few seconds for it all flash, and I just left it, I just left it alone. So this again is just the Dow Jones in there as an example. You can do more, you can do a hundred, but I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be a little slower, obviously. So you have to play around how strong is your computer, how you know how weak it is, and see just what it can do. Many people, if it's a lot of stuff you want to scan, um, you know, they come home, for instance, turn it on, walk away, go have dinner, you know, go brush your teeth, whatever you're gonna do, you know, if it takes a few minutes, then just walk away, come back. And uh, away you go. Then you start filtering through stuff. That's when you start playing around with, well, if you got 100 stocks that you've, you're scanning and then there's 50 signals. Okay, so then maybe you have to start filtering through those 50 for some reason. You start looking at the charts themselves one by one by one, which is pretty easy, right? You just got to click on them and the charts load as fast as that. You can use your arrow key on your keyboard just as easily. So go up and down so you see how fast it's loading. So it's really up to you how you do that. Uh, I did not discuss how alerts work. That is, that's going to be a lot more detailed and complex. Uh, but you can do alerts on charts, but you can also do alerts on the market analyzer. So uh, I, you know, really, the alerts on the charts are not so much for the uh, the chart has to be open. So if the chart's already open, you're already seeing the pattern there anyway. So I don't see any purpose for doing an alert on the chart for a candle pattern if you're looking to do something else like a crossover for instance on a moving average then you could do that as an alert as well uh, but your chart has to be open now the market analyzer is where it's most commonly done so uh, you would simply right click on it and click on alerts and this is where you configure so now we've got videos on this already we go to the best practice videos there's at least some demonstrations there go to the ninja trader youtube site they got a gazillion videos on a gazillion things, but they specifically alerts. 
they will show you how to use this uh, in various ways as well. So you're creating an alert essentially, uh, you have to create your conditions by adding conditions. So what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for you know NCS uh, to show up and it may be certain patterns only. So when it shows up, you'll get dinged. Um, and so just, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a little bit of just learning. Remember, this is like a, almost like a computer program of like binary. Do you understand what binary is? Means it's a zero or a one. If it's a zero, it means nothing showed up. If it's, it's a one, it means it showed up. So it's only looking for a yes or no, in other words. And uh, that's that's the idea, okay? So that's how that works. So go to the best practice. You're gonna see some examples. Go to Ninja's site and you'll get much better detail than I could possibly provide in the time that I have here today. So, all right. Um, okay, let's see what else. I think that's about it. We've got the half hour kind of covered. We've gone through the charts. We've gone through, you know, placing the NCS on your chart, the abbreviations versus not. It's an indicator. I'm going to repeat that again. It's an indicator. It's not a program by itself. So uh, don't look for it by itself somewhere to do something. Uh, you have to just simply install it as an indicator on um, NinjaTrader. All those instructions are pretty straightforward. A couple of clicks here and there, and it's done. Super easy. Once it's loaded on there, if you haven't loaded already, um, you, it asks for your license key. You, gotta have, you have to have a license key for it to work. Once it's working, it's done. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. It just stays on your chart wherever, unless you delete it off your chart, right? Simple as that. Uh, and then you have the market analyzer, as I mentioned. So there you can then configure that as well in terms of which candles you want scanned versus not, with what instruments versus not. Uh, if you want to coincide that with uh, other columns for whatever reason, whether it be another indicator or multiple. See, another choice might be, for instance, uh, let's see what this other column is here. So I have standard strict on that one there. There we go. So that's what I have there as well. So you can actually do like say a monthly column with a weekly column with a daily column. And I've, I've done that for like when I do casual trader once a week for the Sunday folks. I do that every other week, right? You know, and I alternate. So that's where I've done a scan of like about 50 to 70 stocks. And I just do a monthly, weekly, daily. And I just look to see what's up. If I'm looking for interesting patterns that might show up. And then I'm just looking for, you know, what time frame might be the appropriate time to do something on a swing trade, for instance. So I'm specifically using swing trades with two moving averages with that, looking for stuff that's maybe appropriate. So and I make up my own mind in that way. So there's lots of different ways, but don't overcomplicate it. Right now, if you're new to this, simply put them on your charts, learn them first, understand how they work, how they're put in context. There's lots of really fun educational stuff that we have um, to learn the candles better in context, how to use them better, how to, uh, the timing of it all, plus then there's other strategies that, that one can implement as well. So talk to Paul about all that stuff. That should work really, really well for you. Um, so yes, it, it does the highlighting on the chart. It does the scanning in the market analyzer. And then of course Thaddeus there, he was asking me about alerts. The alerts can be done as well, both on the charts ideally, but Really, it's functional in the in the market analyzer where you're just looking for something to alert you on your screen. Say you're in the kitchen, you want something that's going to pop up. That'll happen. So the alerts are really going to be functional and useful, really, I believe, if um, you're in a live session and you've got more of an intraday se series. So if you've got candles that are running on 15 minutes, for instance, or five minutes, and you want something to show up and you step away and you want to be alerted, well, then they'll alert you when something shows up. That's how that would work. You could actually have the alerts, of course, sent to a phone or an email. But uh, my question for everybody is like, okay, so what are you going to do? It's it's just a candle pattern. It doesn't mean it's a buy buy time or sell time. It's just a candle pattern. So you've got to put all that in context. You better have a chart in front of you than to make an assessment based on what's you know popping up at that time. And so that means you're, that means it's a live chart that you're looking at as well, not just end of day. Because end of day, you got you the rest of the night to figure it out. So this depends on what you're trying to do here. So you better be skilled at that if you're looking to get alerts sent to your phone or something like that, or email, for that matter. So keep that in mind. Um, is this software can you use for stocks, index, exchanges? Okay, so um, same question as I answered before, essentially. Um, it's, it's, it is software, obviously, that you, you place on your computer, but it's really just a, a series of 
one or two files depending on which program you're using in terms of a platform for charting. It's an indicator that puts on your chart. It's an indicator that's being used also in the market analyzer for scanning purposes. So it's not a standalone. Um, if you have a platform for charting that is compatible with it, in other words, NinjaTrader, um, TradeStation, Trade Navigator, um, we used to have eSignal at one point, but NCH essentially for Forex. Um, NCH, or pardon me, the uh, MetaTrader, pardon me, MetaTrader 4 or 5. That, those are the ones that are the ones that we can use right now. Um, and as long as you have those and you have data and you can place a candle on your chart, which of course all those can, that's why we use them, then yes, you just have to have the data where you are. So you could be in India, you could be in Fiji, you could be in Australia, you could be in the UK, you could be in Ireland, you could be in the North Pole. If you got internet uh, and you got the platform that supports it uh, and you got data, obviously you have a candle, if you have a candle, it works. Okay, doesn't get any simpler than that. All right, so that's it, uh, let's see. So again, highlighting on the chart, um, scanning purpose in the market analyzer, in this case, the Ninja Trader, and, uh, and then you've got the alerts that can be used as well, but probably the least functional, but certainly can be useful at times when uh, things are in the crunch time. It works, can work pretty well that way as well. Uh, let's see what else is there. I think that's about it. So. The uh, NCS will work with scanning purposes, for instance, um, on this platform, Ninja. It'll work on TradeStation if you have the upgrade with the radar. Uh, if you have uh, Trade Navigator, the MetaTrader does not have scanning purposes. It does highlighting. That's why it's called NCH in that case. This candle highlighter. All right. I think I'm kind of over my time at this point. So. Um, I am going to just show you. Oops, that's what I want right there. All right. Um, I want to show you the email for Paul. And um, so, for any other questions at this point, uh, Paul at CandleCharts.com. Contact him for anything and everything regarding NCS, anything regarding education, understanding candle patterns strategies whatever it may be uh, but there's go to candlecharts.com slash ncs for all the information that you're asking about costs somebody asked me about that as well um, and then thaddeus is asking does every candle appearing on a chart have a given name no no specific ones were, were provided or given by the japanese that meant something, meaning they had a meaning of like a reversal, for instance, or an explosive move. So, but not every candle pattern is, uh, it's based on context again. So you may have something that looks like say a hammer, but it's in the, it's in the middle of a, of a range, of, you know, of a trend. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not a hammer because a hammer has to be at a bottom and then a reversal. Otherwise it's not a hammer, et cetera, right? So yes. So not every candle has a name necessarily. Depends on its shape and where it's positioned, where it's placed, and how it's in context. All right. All right. So that's so candlecharts.com slash NCS for anything regarding NCS and information and understanding on that, all the info there. Uh, check that out ASAP. And then Paul at candlecharts.com for any other questions that may be required or needed. So I don't know. Paul's around, he wants to say anything else, but by all means, I'm going to sign off and I'm going to leave the, at least the mic available, the screen on in case he wants to come and say anything. But otherwise, thanks for your attention, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, busy, take time out of your busy, busy days and uh, spending a little time with me and Paul for a little moment and learning and understanding more about NCS and what it can all do for you as well. Thanks.